In this episode of Relax Mail, we are talking about the four pillars of being a relaxed male. And we are to the second pillar, which is the man's mind. And so we're going to get into depth as to what it is and why that's important. That and question of the week on episode number 36 of the Relaxed Mail. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail, a podcast that helps men change their relationship with themselves. I am your host, Brian, and I am a men's life and mindset coach who is here to help you understand that you don't have to suffer at your own expense. You can live your dream, and I encourage you to set, then pursue your goals. So join me as I change the mindset and attitudes of men so that they can be the leaders of their families and their destinies. Hey, man. Hello and welcome to Relax Now. I appreciate you so much for taking the time out of your day to let me uh, come in and talk to you personally about different issues and thoughts on how you can help your son to become the better, stronger man that you would like for him to be. And uh, at the same time, making sure that you are the man that your son needs you to be. And to do that, we are addressing this week the the mind of a man, the man's mind. Why is that important, and why is that a one of the four pillars of being a relaxed male? And we kind of dive into just the uh, the details, get into some of the details, dive into the uh, the the hows and the whys, and and things along those those ways. And we also have, as every week, a. Uh, a question of the week, and our question of the week again is coming from uh, coming from Cora. And uh, if you would like to have ask a question of the week, I would love for you to have a uh, to ask a question, and you can do so by going over to relaxmail dot com forward slash contact and leave a question in the in the form and send it over, and we will use your question in the in the following episode. Unless we got a whole bunch, and then they'll just come in as uh, uh, in the order that they are received. So, but anyhow, today's question I wanted to go ahead and let's jump into the the question of the week. And the question of the week is: My son is eager to leave home, even though I've expressed to him multiple times that he could stay. Did I fail as a parent? Well, what I basically told him is: first off, um, assuming that the kid is. Uh, is over the age of 18 because uh, and it might, the age limit may vary depending on what country uh, this person is in. But in the U.S., 18, you're considered an adult. So if he's eight, over the age of 18 and he's wanting to leave, good, great, finally. You want him out of the house. It's not just, you know, a – something mean to say. I mean, it sounds like this particular parent was really wanting to, is, is afraid that this, uh, this must be the youngest child who's uh, wanting to leave. But either way, I told him, I basically told him that no, didn't fail as a, as a parent. Uh, you, as a matter of fact, you did a, they did a wonderful job as being a parent because they raised a son who is strong and independent enough that he wants to venture out and explore the world and carve out his own little slice of his own kingdom. And so be, doing that is, is a great and great thing. And that's the objective of being a parent. It isn't to have someone around, to, you know, to take care of you when you get old. It is to have someone who can be strong enough and be a, a leader for his own family, for his own, uh, his own community. Even if he was a, you know, a bit of a troublemaker and he, you're afraid that he's going to get into, uh, get into to trouble. Well, that's kind of part of it. When you're out on your own, you're going to do stupid stuff. You're going to get yourself in trouble. You may end up having a little bit of a uh, issue with the law. You may, you know, figure out that, uh, yeah, checks were really cool, but, you know, writing checks just because you have them doesn't really equal to uh, a great response from from other people or from the police when they see that you have a bench warrant for a uh, for writing hot checks 
So also, I wanted to kind of tell them that, uh, tell the, the question, the person who asked the question is, wanted to point out to them that, yeah, your, your son is going to have problems. Uh, he's going to struggle. And that is actually a really good thing. You want to allow your child to struggle, even when they're, you know, 12 and 18 still living in your house, giving them the chance to struggle, try to figure it out on their own. Don't do the work for them because that's not really helping them at, at all. You want them to become accustomed to getting uncomfortable, to having to realize why, why you don't wait until the last minute to do your science project because in the end, it's going to be a crappy project. There, and us parents, a lot of times, come rushing in, being the hero. I mean, it does us, it gives us a serotonin bump because we're we're now the hero. We saved the day. We're we're doing good, but we did no no gave the child it, themselves any benefit whatsoever. And so that's that's the uh, that's the the big part of of when parenting to to let them struggle. And so whenever they're, they're out on their own, they're going to have to struggle and figure out and how do you feed yourself when you don't have enough money? How do you do all these, all these different, uh, uh, different tasks that are required of us as adults? We have to take out the trash. Yeah. Mom and dad, they, so it's weird. The house stinks after, you know, after two weeks of not taking the garbage out. I don't, it's weird. And all of a sudden I take the garbage out and it doesn't smell anymore. It's, it's a, it's a weird concept. I know, you know, and I've got, I've got roaches all over the place, but yet, uh, they seem to disappear when you start cleaning the kitchen up after you finish cooking. There's, uh, you know, these, these little lessons that life teaches you life is such a hard teacher but a very effective teacher and so tried to encourage uh her name is stephanie smith and tried to encourage this uh this mom saying no just relax allow the son to step out go on his own let his wings stretch and stretch his wings so he can fly now, if the child, if their son is under the age of 18, there's a few, uh, few issues that can crop up into that. The big, big one being, you know, he's not going to have any place to live. So if you can, and on top of that, he's dropping out of school and he's just, he's got the last, you know, last quarter of his, of his school career left. He's already made it over halfway. He's got three quarters of the job done. Now he's wanting to to leave and drop it right there when he's almost at the finish line. He's just got a hundred yards left. He's ran a a four hundred meter dash and he's got he's at the last hundred meters and just got to get to that la- just push just a little bit further. And that is so hard and so uncomfortable and so frustrating for kids. I remember watching my son because he was the same way. He was he was uh, in his senior year. He was so done with high school. He was so done with being, looking at books. He was not having it. He did not enjoy it. And it took every ounce of willpower from me and his mom to get him cross that finish line. And that's it. He got crossed that finish line. He received that diploma and boom, he was he was wanting to go out and wanting to show us that he knew what he was doing. And again, <laughs> is a very uh, cruel teacher. And he started to realize, I think he ha- heard the pop uh, a lot sooner than, uh, than some kids. And he was, that's because he had to struggle for a while. And now he is uh, in, uh, working at a, uh, as a uh, commercial fisherman over in California and apparently is having the time of his life. And I'm so glad that he's able to do that. And I'm glad that I didn't succumb to the worries and the fears and the, and all that, that I was, that I personally had because he wouldn't have been able to learn. He, and still, he's still on the process a journey of learning. I mean, well, heck, we're going to be talking about that in the later parts of the, uh, of this podcast, but we're, we are always learning. If you're not learning, you're dying. So kind of told Stephanie, you know, you're going to have, there's a bit of force of a will, find a way to get him to stay in in high school. Um, But if not, if he just hell bent on not going to school anymore and he wants to go out and drop out and he wants to go live on his own, 
Well, that's you're going to have to worry more about what you think the neighbors are going to think than what they then uh then yeah than what your son thinks is right or wrong because you're going to that's that vanity is going to be causing a, causing a bit of a problem for you. Um there might be where you just finally say, "Okay, fine. You want to leave. You want to get out of the house. You want to you think your uh your your birthday is uh, and you turn 17 next month and you think you've had enough and you want to get out? All right, well, dude. Good luck to you. Or you want me to send your send your mail. Come home on Sundays and uh, we'll have we'll have supper. And uh quickly realized that first off working at McDonald's doesn't pay the bills. Um, working at, you need to have some type of skill and to get a skill. They all of a sudden, they start to realize I had uh, one of my son's friends did the very, very thing. And he's realized, holy smokes, you can't make, you can't do anything <laughs> if you don't have, you can't make, you barely make anything if you don't have a high school diploma. You can make a little bit better if you do have a high school diploma, but you can, um, if you can at least find a way of getting into, um, into a trade school and learning a skill, then you can start making some respectable money. And that's the, uh, that's a, it's a hard lesson to learn because you have to go through the process of, of famine and not being able to pay your rent and, and all that. And you're trying to try things out. You're like, Oh, well, let's get four of us guys to live together. And, but we, we can do it that way. And as you do the four guys together, you, you all of a sudden you've got, yeah, you've got one that, uh, is doing pretty good. He's making, you know, 16 bucks an hour. You found a good job doing 16 and the others are, you know, doing minimum wage McDonald's because they would rather, you know, have the ability to go fart around. Well, eventually they realize, Oh, the guy who paid all the money has decided, never mind. He doesn't want to be the, the, one supporting everybody because he'd like to spend his money on things he'd like to, he, he wants to do. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm rambling a bit on it, but it's your, you get the gist that he's going to, they get it figured out. All, kids do that's, uh, and the, the teacher is, is not the parent, uh, in all reality. Parents are actually, at, especially when they're about 16 on up, parents really need to, step out of the parenting mode because you're you're going to cause a child to rebel more just by sitting there going oh, I'm parenting I'm going to lord over you and blah, blah, you know you be the parental parent you're not going to that's not going to happen you're not going to make any headway you're not going to do any good communication when you are at that point that's where it's better if you just sit down and you start you shift your your parenting mode from the Lord of the house to uh, the mentor of the house, and you start guiding them, and su- making suggestions, and letting. And then when they don't do that suggestion, just go. Well, I mean, you could have done it the way I mentioned it, and it probably would have gone better. So, did she fail as a parent? Uh, as a parent, by letting the child, uh, letting her son leave the house? No, no, didn't fail at all. Uh, if she was over the age 18, she did great. He's wanting to be an independent, strong, independent man. If, uh, he's under, well, he wants to, uh, learn, uh, wants to learn through life. And I'm kind of on the path of, well, maybe you will not let him. So that, that's my answer to the, uh, to the question of the week. Um, maybe if you've got any comments or, or, uh, insight on it and you have a different point of view on it, please send it over to, uh, to, to relaxmail.com forward slash contact or go to, or send, send an email to Brian with a Y at relaxedmail.com. Brian with a Y with a, at relaxedmail.com. So, all right. Now let's go on ahead and head on over to, uh, the main topic. We are talking about the man's mind. So what do I mean by the man's mind? Well, it's not just your brain. It's not uh, right off the bat. It's, we're, yeah, you need to, uh, when it comes to the man's mind, it is everything that encompasses the mind. That is uh, mental health. That is um, growth. 
that is learning, that is re- relaxing your mind, allowing the the knowing how to get the thoughts to uh, to fade away, not to stop, but you know, just to kind of not be as bombarding as it uh, as it was before. When you're keeping up uh, your mind and. Uh, there's, it's more than just, you know, sitting around doing Sudoku puzzles or, or crossword puzzles. Yeah, those are, are good. They do exercise your mind in a way, but there's, there's other things that need to be done so that your mind stays strong and alert and keeps your, your, your logic and reasoning skills up to a, uh, up to a level. And, the mind itself is important. It's not more, it's as the, uh, as one of my coaches used to say, use your mind for more than a hat, use your head for more than a hat rack. And he's right. You've got to be able to, uh, keep your wits sharp about you because you're going to be faced with different, uh, different issues, different, uh, scenarios, different problems, different, a lot of different, uh, Scenarios that are just going to, that you had not ever thought of, or you may have thought of and you've been able to prepare. But also when you're keeping your mind fit and you're keeping your mind alert, you're not going to suffer nearly as much with mental illnesses. Now, are we going to have, are the mental illnesses happening? Yeah. Yeah. I've had, uh, I've lost two friends who I thought were very, uh, mentally fit and, uh, and uh, I lost them to to mental illness for suicide, whatever the reason for the suicide was. And I've talked about Corey, and I've talked about Jake, and they uh, those are two deaths that I mean just really hit me hard, and uh, I still can't even try to comprehend why they would want to do something like that. But it's been done, and it's uh, something that I puzzle over on a regular basis. So mental illness is a a problem that we have to keep abreast. And then again, it's the logic and the reasoning. And how do you keep all that sharp? Well, uh, one of the best ways to keep that sharp is on all honesty, stay away from the television. Um, yeah, it's nice to sit down and watch a show. You get to the fear of missing out whenever, you, you know, people talking about the latest episode of whatever is the hit show is at the time. But I have seen too many people who use the television as a buffer. They, uh, especially if they have, um, a, a problem with, I'm not going to say control. I'm, I'm, the word itself is actually, but anyhow. Is escaping me, but they're, they want to venture back and, and think back when, uh, about the good old days there. And so a lot of people, um, like to watch a lot of, you know, the old reruns of, of old shows that back when they, things were nice and fun and they were, you had a, a happier mindset. And, so, I mean, my stepmother had a lot of that, uh, that problem because she was, she was on, uh, turned it on TV land, uh, all the time. I, I grew up watching My Three Sons, not when it was originally out, but the reruns watched My Three Sons and Car 54, Where Are You? And F Troop and, uh, Mary Tyler Moore Show and, uh, That Girl. And I mean, just all these, you know, Love American style. I remember watching it so, uh, a few times, but you know, in the late sixties and through the seventies, the TV land used to just show a whole bunch of the old black and white and just uh, green acres in the color, uh, shows. And she would just, she, that's what she would watch. Not that it was, um, it was bad shows. They were funny. Yeah. You laughed and I still, Catch uh, episodes of My Three Sons on from time to time, and it's like, hey, go! Oh, I remember that one, and it they're they're good, they're good to to go back. But it's a lot like someone who takes a takes a drug. It's meant to they do it to to escape whatever the problem is is not um, 
is not being addressed when you're constantly sitting in front of television. First thing you do is you get in, you turn on the television, you go to sports, and you ought to sit and wonder, why am I sitting down? Ask yourself, start asking yourself some very pertinent questions, very thought provoking questions like, why do I sit down to immediately start watching sports? Why do I flip to ESPN? What is it about sports? Well, in all reality, I think what the, what you're actually craving on that is, uh, the need for controlled violence. And yes, we, us men need controlled violence in our lives. We are these testosterone, uh, brutes that not that we need to go out and, you know, punch somebody, but, you know, getting out and working off that excess energy, watching, that's why so many of us are so attracted to, uh, sports because there's that, that element of controlled violence. You've got p- football players smacking into each other. You've got the basketball players bouncing off of each other. You've got, uh, baseball, uh, players sliding into someplace. There's, it's a burst, uh, of, of energy and, and there's a bit of physical contact in it. And that helps to relieve the, the bent, pent up, uh, aggression that we have in ourselves. So maybe you're needing to, to join up and with a, uh, and do some jujitsu or karate or, uh, do some boxing or maybe just getting some, some exercise into you. Just there's, and exercise helps your, your mind uh, quite a bit because again, like I mentioned last week, you get the, the oxygen flowing, you get in all that and you really, your body is able to flush out the, the, the excess testosterone that's not being used. And, and you're, and being the, being fit and because you're being fit, you're able to also exercise your, your mind. So. If you're needing to stay away from television and, or if you are, uh, a video game player, which I, I love to play video games, working through, uh, days gone right now, if you're interested, you, you want to limit that. It's not, use the, uh, the television, use the, use video games as a, as a reward because to just immediately turn to it, one, it's, you're not going to get any sharper at, at stuff. Yeah, you may be mentally alert as to what's going on in front of the television, but you're not exercising your mind for preparedness to do other things. You're going to react to stuff a lot more because of it being an inconvenience than you are going to be responding to something that you were expecting to happen. So how do you keep your mind strong? And uh, the way you keep your mind strong is start with keep learning. Don't think you know it all. Don't think you ha- don't need to learn anything else because the moment you start, you stop learning is the moment you start dying. Your brain's not going to, to be a sharp, you're going to start sliding down. You're going to stop, uh, you're going to, you're not going to have the mental fortitude that you did before. If you are just stop, you're not doing the reading. You're not doing anything in particular to, to exercise your mind. Yeah. You can do a puzzle from time to time and that does a little bit, but it's not as much as if you were to, to, uh, have, you know, conversations with somebody, especially somebody of, uh, of who has a slightly opposing uh, viewpoint. But there's a couple of different ways. Big way. Biggest way to learn is reading nonfiction books. And, that, and I'm actually meaning physical books, not audio books. Audio books help. They're great. You learn stuff from it. But there's also just something about seeing the words on a page that just hammers stuff home just a little bit, a little bit better. And if you can Get yourself into the habit of reading 10, uh, 10 pages a day. You will find that you actually gather more knowledge, garner more uh, information, and you are able to process that experience a lot better. So reading's good, yeah. But And, yeah, you can read some fiction books, but I would actually recommend uh, somewhere along the way, start incorporating 
nonfiction books into it. Doesn't have to be self help uh, books. Doesn't have to be anything like that. But you read biographies, read history books, anything nonfiction. Read uh, and learn from the people from of the past. You uh, you can learn a great deal about mindsets and and uh, how people react to different situations by reading those biographies and those history books and the like. But if you can also, if you also started digging into self-help books, you start learning about finances and you can start learning about um, business and things. there's so many different non, uh, uh, nonfiction books out there that are great for you to learn. Take the time to learn, use that, but don't, just solely just take the information and hold on to it, but you need to uh, apply it. Uh, another way that you can keep your mind sharp is to learn a word of the day. We've had that before, haven't you? you? Where you go through, you learn a word. That's where I got uh, convivial. I love that word. I think it's just an interesting word, convivial, which means to be uh, uh, to be happy. Uh, it's a uh, a state of, of being happy. You've got a convivial conversation, a, a good conversation going, a happy conversation going, uh, easygoing conversation. Another one is uh, puro, which is to mean juvenile. These are two words that I did for a while on a, uh, uh, on a word of the day kick. And so I'd get a word of the day and I would try to find 10 instances of slipping that new word into a conversation one it makes you sound sound smarter but also it expands your vocabulary i don't use convivial very often but i have used it once or twice another way is sit down and have conversations that's why it's if you uh, if you're in a small town you, uh, you've seen the gaggle of old guys old farmers and folks who like to sit at the coffee shop and they will sit there and they will talk for hours on end you know, they'll, they'll come in and the first thing in the morning and they'll sit there for two hours and have coffee and talk with all the other farmers. And then around three o'clock in the afternoon, they'll get together again and they'll have some more conversations. And then, uh, sometimes you'll have a smaller group that meets, uh, in the evening, but that's, you know, those are uh, rare instances. If, uh, if those conversations are great and if you can sit down and you can have you know, even weekly conversations. And that's where uh, masterminds come into great play because you are forcing yourself to get into conversations, to listen to what other people have to say. And so you can grasp what their uh, other lines of thinking, other mindsets, and you continue to be able to grow because you are having these discussions with other people who are not necessarily in your uh, zone of influence. And another way is, and this has more been more towards the mental health part, but practice mindfulness. We don't pay attention to what we think nearly as much as we really need to. Um, so many people want to think that their spouse isn't making them happy. And that's in all reality, it's not them. It's not their spouse. that's not making them happy. That responsibility, who makes you happy, is actually falls upon you. Uh, the circumstances create your thoughts. Circumstances being a completely neutral event. And you're, when you have a thought about that circumstance, that makes it whether it's going to be a positive or negative event. But that thought generates the emotion that you have. And so if your thoughts aren't having, aren't, are causing you not to be happy, that's more upon you. That is not the uh, your 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 wife. Now, and your wife's not even not, is not even her responsibility to make you happy because she can't make you happy. That is that is all on your on you. You you're the only one who can make yourself happy. And the way we you do that is you start paying attention to what thoughts are actually going through your mind. Are you in a bad mood? Well, what thoughts were you having that caused you to be in a bad mood? Why are you in a bad mood? Depends on what you're thinking. And if you can pay attention and you start noticing that you have these thought loops of something, say somebody said something weird, like, well, yesterday I had a, I, I got, I got kicked out of a, out of a Facebook group. Um, I got, well, first I got a 24 hour, uh, 
24 hour uh, muting, uh, got put in a timeout for 24 hours in, in this group. And then when I got back, I was jumped right back into the conversation to, because there was still a lot of what I, pers- what I see as misinformation being ca- bantered about. And so I jumped right back into it. And so they again, Said, all right. Well, we gave you another chance. You, you weren't uh, weren't going to let it go, so uh, out you go. So, and I looked at that, and I wanted so much to make a a sharp, quick witted, you know, snide remark back at him, and I even went as far as trying to look the person up on the uh, on the on the Facebook group or look up the, the admin on the, on the Facebook group who actually punted me out. And I was going to send them a uh, telling letter. And they're obviously you were smart enough and had to add enough people go in there that whenever they ban, uh, kick them out of the, uh, out of the group, they block them from, uh, they also block them from being able to see them. So, um, but it was, it ate on me for, I don't know, good 30 minutes or so because it was like, Oh, that's just nerd. You know, and I realized I was having a thought loop of, well, I need to tell them, need to let them know. And, and it doesn't matter. That's not, I was that group of, of parents, uh, and with, uh, supporting each other with, uh, um, supposed to be a teenage support group. Uh, they uh, didn't care to, uh, they didn't want, to, uh, my information and or my thoughts or my opinions or my, the way I support people. That's fine. That's not what they're, uh, that's, uh, that's their choice. And I can either obsess over it. I could choose to do that or I could just be like Elsa and just let it go. And I finally, once I realized that my thought error and my, how I was continually trying to letting my thoughts go back to, um, go back to the, to that event and, my thoughts were making, setting off the, the emotion of anger and frustration. I realized after that, just stop it and drop the topic altogether. And it takes a little bit. I mean, it's not like instantly you go, well, I don't think about it. No, you, you notice when you have to notice when you're thinking about it and to be able to notice what you're thinking about really helps when you have, when you do some mindful meditation, you sit there and you pay attention to what thought is going through your mind. And if you are done with that thought, then uh, if that thought isn't serving you, then let that thought go. And you to be able to do that, it helps when you have do some type of mindful meditation. So how, why is the mind, how does the mindfulness fit in, or a man's mind fit into uh, the foundation of being a relaxed male? This is, uh, as I've mentioned before, all the different pillars actually help each other. They're, they're, so your mindfulness actually supports when you're, when you have the right type of, of mindset, which is part of being a part of your mind. Also, it's got the word in there, mindset, how you set your mind depends on, uh, warrants on how much effectiveness your, going to be when you're trying to work on your on your body when you're trying to get yourself into health you have to be able to look at a problem and take that take the needed steps to actually address and work through the steps needed to be able to get your body into shape and if you come across something a thought that is keeping you from from working out keeping you from eating the proper uh, food, then you're, you have to, you want to be able to think that problem through, oversee the, and overthrow the, the thoughts, the, the disrupting thoughts that are creating that limited belief, how to address those limiting beliefs, how to create a better, uh, line of, of, of thinking that will actually help you to become a better, stronger, uh, person. The mind also helps with your soul. You need your thoughts to make your, to help when it comes to creativity. When you're creating, you need your thoughts and your and emotions and all that other stuff that goes together with when you are creating 
something, whether it's art or a, a better project or a doing a hobby, whatever it is that feeds your soul, that's where the where you have to have a a good mind, a good mindset, and a good way of thinking about stuff to be able to let your soul be fed the way that it needs to be. And again, if you have a good mindset, then that also helps with uh, the community. Uh, you're going to be a lot more accepting uh, in the community. You're going to your mind when you have your mind set uh, to a positive angle. You're going to be a positive influence in your community. So having a mind, a good, healthy mindset and having a, your, the, and taking care of your mind helps you to become a, a better person all around. The same as helping your, a, your body become strong and, and able helps you to be, uh, be of service, uh, to all the, the other three, uh, other three pillars. So that's what we have. That's how that's a man's mind in kind of a uh, in a 30 minute nutshell or at least a 20 minute nutshell. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to wrap this up. And I thank you again for taking the time to let me uh, yabber in your ear. If you have uh, a question, you can send it again over to uh, relaxmail.com uh, forward slash uh, contact. If you have listened to this show and you like it and you like what's being said and kind of are starting to get, kind of grasp what's being, what's being done here, I, dude, I'd love for you to go off and subscribe to the show. You can get, do so by any of the, uh, podcatchers out there. So if you're just now getting into podcasts and you just have a trip over this uh, particular podcast itself and you like the episode and you're like, well, okay, I'm, I think I'll go ahead and start listening to more of them. You can do so in a myriad of ways. If you go to relaxmail.com forward slash subscribe, there is a uh, way, all sorts of ways that I try to make it as easy for you to be able to, to connect uh, and subscribe to the show through a, uh, a myriad of different uh, platforms, overcast and uh, cast uh, caster any of those, I, you, there is a way I've set it up and made it to make it as easy as possible so that each of these episodes, as they come out, uh, are automatically taken to your, uh, to your phone and downloaded, ready for you to listen when you are ready to, to, to listen to them. If you like this show, you've been listening for a while and you'd like to really help me out. Big favor is if you're on, uh, if you're on, uh, uh, on an iPhone, if you could, so click the subscribe button. You don't have to download, but just click the subscribe button on on the uh, Apple Podcast app and subscribe to this show. That will help me to rise up further in the uh, in the rankings. If you would like to help other people, just make a decision on whether or not to listen to the show. Please leave a rating and review. That helps them. It gives me a little bit of social proof that hey, this guy actually is cranking out some decent episodes and does a good job with it. If you are on a, an Android phone or any other way, go to podchaser.com forward slash relaxed mail, or you can go to relaxmail.com forward slash podchaser, and that'll take you over to the my podchaser page, and there you can also leave a rating and review, and uh, have a great time being able to uh, uh, be able to uh, find other great shows. That's uh, Podchaser is uh, kind of the IMDB of the podcast world. I'm just really big in that site. So, all right, folks, I am glad that you were listening. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here so that you can go about your day. Thanks again. We will be talking to you soon. And we will, uh, um, so until next week, get out there and start reading.